How is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of Bear Down Uncut, where we talk everything Bears every day of the week. Are you surprised that Bilal Nichols got the nod at nose tackle? How about Ted Ginn Jr. at wide receiver three? Today, in episode number 79 of Uncut, we're going to be breaking down everything for you guys that came with the Bears' first unofficial depth chart. Welcome back to the show, guys. I would like to say... We are 125 subscribers away from our goal of two of uh, 2,500 before the season starts. It's looking unlikely, but let's see if we can get to 2.4K subs before the season gets underway. Uh, we're pumping out a ton of content for you guys. Um, five podcasts coming this week. If you guys didn't already see Meet the Opponents last night, uh, be sure to check it out. But if you are new to the channel and want Bears content every day of the week, do us a favor, click that red button to subscribe, click the bell for notifications whenever we post, and let's try and hit 50 likes on this video. I'm your host, Chris Malpe, and today I'm joined with my co-hosts, Par Shaw and Jalen McClinton. How's it going, fellas? It's going pretty good. I haven't really done much today, but got a couple fantasy drafts tonight before the season starts on Thursday, which should be super fun. Um, I just woke up and uh, Chris just called me talking about let's do a video so I'm not going to decline that but other than that um, season starts in two days um, Bears start on Sunday and I can't wait yeah so we've got a lot to talk about today uh, in regards to the Bears' death chart there's definitely uh, a couple surprises that we need to break down first and foremost Bilal Nichols is going to be starting at nose tackle across from Akeem Hicks we all know that uh, Eddie Goldman decided to sit the season out uh, due to COVID-19 concerns. He's someone who has had asthma issues in the past. And it looks like Nichols will get the nod after moving over from defensive end. Uh, a traditional nose tackle uh, is not something that Nichols may look like at, at a lean 6'3", 313. But uh, we may not see the Bears ask him to go two gap as much as they did with Eddie Goldman. Uh, Chuck Pagano can get very... Uh, interesting with uh, the four-man fronts this year. So, Jalen, I want to ask you first, how do you feel about Nichols moving over to nose tackle and getting that starting spot? Um, I'm kind of happy for, for Bilal. You know, he's been a person that's been a great rotational piece for us since 2018, um, as, since he was a rookie. Now, um, I'm confident in him, but I don't think he's going to produce at his first game at nose tackle in the run game like Eddie did. Eddie is one of the best run stuffers, um, one, one of the best nose tackles in the league. He's one of the best run defenders in a in a whole NFL, and um, he's somebody who's very underrated for for the stuff he does. So, um, I want to see how Bilal, you know, adjusts to being the nose tackle and if he can keep up that production that Eddie did. Yeah, uh, I, I'm excited to see what Nichols can do. You know, uh, he's a player who's been, as Jalen said, uh, productive throughout his time in Chicago. Uh, 55 combined tackles, three sacks. Uh, definitely a great rotational piece who's finally going to get his edge to start or his chance to start. Uh, he's played 27 career games, also has had six tackles for a loss and nine quarterback hits. Uh, I think his numbers will continue to slowly increase. I, I agree with you, Jalen. I think it's going to be a little bit of a slow start for him, but I'm excited to see what he can do, and I don't think there's going to be a massive drop-off there with everything that the Bears front seven is looking to achieve this year with Hicks back healthy alongside Mack and Quinn. So, Parth, what do you think? Do you... Uh, I mean, what are your thoughts on uh, Bilal Nichols starting here? Excited for him. I feel like he's shown us enough production over the last two years that he deserves a shot at starting. Um, he's not a traditional nose tackle. He doesn't have the measurables, you could say, but I think, you know, he's athletic enough to do it, do the switch. Uh, like you guys said, it'll take him a couple games to get to used to that nose tackle position. It's not an easy position to play. You know, Eddie Goldman is heavily underrated in the NFL. But um, I think a couple games, uh, you know, will do him justice and he'll be fine after that. Yeah, uh, it should be exciting to see what Nichols can get done. Hopefully uh, he can still be productive and, and uh, there won't be a ton of drop-off there from losing Eddie Goldman on the Bears. Next thing we have to discuss, Theodore Ginn Jr., otherwise known as Ted Ginn Jr., the ninth overall pick in the 2007 NFL Draft. He is 35 years old, and he will get the start at wide receiver with Allen Robinson and Anthony Miller. 
Uh, just taking a look at what Ted Ginn's done throughout his career. Last year with the New Orleans Saints, he played in 57% of the offensive snaps. Doesn't have the greatest hands in the league. Uh, he's a pretty solid route runner, and his speed still can make defensive backs nervous. Uh, two touchdowns also last year in 2019. There's been discussion all offseason on who was going to get that wide receiver three spot, um, whether it was going to be Darnell Mooney even, who uh, who surprised a lot of people at training camp, Javon Wims uh, entering his third year in the league, uh, a former seventh-round pick who's been pretty productive, or uh, the 2018 third-round – or 2019 uh, third-round pick – uh, in Riley Ridley, someone who didn't get much of an opportunity last year whatsoever, but obviously we know he is related to Calvin Ridley. So Ted Ginn does get the nod here, uh, something that I've been predicting for a while, even though there was a little bit of a discrepancy when it came to him. Uh, obviously back at the 2007 NFL Combine, he ran a 4-2-8 40-yard dash. So, you know, uh, if he can stay healthy, Jalen, I want to ask you, if he can stay healthy, how much of an asset do you think Ted Ginn can be here in Matt Nagy's offense? Now, they usually say this, like, roster's unofficial, and I'm pretty sure this is basically the whole, like, not the roster, the depth chart, but I'm pretty sure, like, everything on this is pretty official when it is unofficial. But I, I still don't feel like he's, that he's going to, you know, use him as the wide receiver three. Um, it's a lot of younger guys and, you know, people could say more talented guys behind him. I always think he's produced more than any of these guys behind him ever have in their NFL career. Um, but I feel like we still have a, a lot of more potential behind him with Ridley, um, Javon Wims, and Darnell Mooney. If he is the wide receiver, too, I could definitely see you know, Nagy using him as a deep threat, something we, we didn't really have last season due to Taylor Gabriel being out most of the season with concussions and stuff like that. So if he is, um, I could see him on a lot of go routes and just you know, getting behind the defense and stuff like that. I mean, look, when it comes to uh, the Bears' wide receiver room, I, I think everything rides on everyone but Allen Robinson. Uh, we know Allen Robinson's going to, uh, to to be there. He twisted his ankle during training camp, but Robinson's fine. He always is. Uh, so I think it comes down to these guys, like Jalen said, uh, to, we can't have guys going down with concussions like Taylor Gabriel did in 2019 and 2018. Um, I think it's going to be big time if Ginn can step up here. Uh, I think if he can stay healthy, I think he could be a decent uh, threat here. Uh, we saw what he was able to do the last couple of years with New Orleans, 787 receiving yards and four touchdowns in 2017. Um, I mean, he's 35. Uh, you, you, you can't expect the world out of him, but if he can be healthy, if Anthony Miller can be healthy, uh, I think they can be some solid assets and especially help out Mitchell Trubisky or Nick Foles, whoever is back there, depending on the week. Uh, so I think Ted Ginn could be solid at wide receiver three. I I predicted this from uh, day one. A lot of people want to see Wims, Ridley, and Mooney get shots, but it looks like Ginn's going to be the guy. Uh, it, he's starting at the Z slot, so uh, I'd imagine he'd have around 50% of snaps this year, and uh, I still think he's got the speed to be able to succeed here in Chicago. So, Parth, what do you think about Ted Ginn uh, getting the start at wide receiver three? I wouldn't say I'm surprised, but, I mean, because Matt Nagy has been, let's say, a little... little he hasn't been using his rookie wide receivers or the young wide receivers as much. You know, Ridley didn't get much snaps last year, or Wims didn't get much his rookie year either. So I did not expect Darnell Mooney to be our wide receiver three at all. But I was surprised to see guys like Wims or Ridley not being listed at wide receiver three. I guess Ted Ginn's experience and leadership played a huge role in that. Um, I guess he learned the def uh, offense pretty quickly as well, which means that he earned the nod at wide receiver three. I'm excited to see how he can stretch the field. Like Jalen said, we didn't have anyone last year that stretched the field for us. Uh, you know, we missed the deep threat. We also missed the tight ends. So this year, Trubisky, uh, if he can play all 16 games, he gets the tight ends back and some speed back in the offense because last year there wasn't much speed. Yeah, uh, and it's also worth noting one last thing on the tight ends that uh, Mooney actually is listed ahead of uh, Radley Ridley at the third yeah. wide receiver spot uh, behind, uh, obviously, the speedster and Ginn. And I feel like that's a, a perfect place for uh, the two-lane product to learn the ropes. So good for Darnell Mooney, and we'll see if Ted Ginn can still be productive at 35 years of age. Finally, Chicago's rookie class is coming to play here uh, when we look at this depth chart. Uh, Cole Komet is listed as the number two tight end. Jalen Johnson is listed at the starting corner. Uh, following a little bit of a slow start to camp, but the Bears did move on from Kevin Tolliver. Uh, taking a look at Komet, he's either going to be Jimmy Graham's backup at the U, but I would figure that he's going to be the first man up at the wide tight end. Uh, he'll definitely be contributing as a rookie. 
Uh, considering the Bears are going to play a lot of 12 personnel this year, run one running back, two tight ends, or at least in my eyes, uh, I think it'll be fun to see how they deploy these tight ends throughout the season. So, Parth, I want to jump right back to you quickly. We see Jalen Johnson starting. I, I don't think that's as much of a surprise, but Cole Komet's looking to take on a really big role here. Do you think both of these rookies will be able to contribute here in week one? Yeah, I do. I do. And that's, I think, the, one of the best parts, having a two second-round picks. You get two starting caliber players right from the start. You know, Jalen Johnson, I did not expect him to start. I thought KT22, Kevin Tolliver, Tolliver was going to be a starting cornerback. But he came into camp, had some attitude issues, you know, didn't mix well with some of the coaches, and the Bears released him. If that's what's best for the franchise, I agree with them. So, you know, Jalen Johnson, he's going to have to learn the ropes of the NFL, and it's not going to be easy going up against Marvin Jones or Kenny Galladay in his first game at all. Two really good wide receivers, especially with Matthew Stafford back and healthy. He's a great quarterback when he's healthy. So Jalen Johnson's definitely got his work cut out for his first game. And then for Cole Komet, uh, you know, We've heard a lot of good things at the camp out of him. You know, him and Jim Graham have been mixing well together. It'll just be great to have some tight ends that are effective again. You know, last year we saw the Bears get, you know, basically zero production out of their tight ends. Usually everyone was hurt. We're playing with our tight end five, tight end six as their starters. So, you know, to have a refresher, to have a young guy back there and Cole Komet, it'll be fun to watch. Yeah, uh, I, I think Cole uh, is a very interesting prospect. I mean, you look at what Ryan Pace said a couple of days ago, uh, that the Cole Komet hype train has left the station and that uh, that Komet is one of the most football-knowledgeable rookies uh, he thinks he's ever seen in the league. And then you look at Jalen Johnson, obviously he's been recovering from uh, from that shoulder injury, that torn labrum, but he played the entire 2019 season for the Utah Utes with it and still had uh, 34 tackles, a tackle for a loss, two interceptions, uh, seven career interceptions at Utah for him. Uh, a player with that ego, that motto, that dog mentality uh, that you look for on the Bears with guys like Akeem Hicks and such. So I'm excited to see what Jalen Johnson can do. Um, I think Cole Komet, I mean, I said it when he was drafted, I think he's the most NFL, t uh, NFL ready tight end out of, that, uh, out of all those prospects that were available among guys like Bryson Hopkins and such. So I think both of these guys will be able to contribute week one. Uh, obviously, Jalen does get the start. Uh, and I think we will also see uh, Komet at the Y, as well as backing up a bit at the U, and you can slide in Demetrius Harris there. Uh, uh, but, you know, these guys are playing alongside guys like Jimmy Graham, Kyle Fuller, Eddie Jackson, Demetrius Harris, some uh, some pretty grizzled veterans, and uh, similar to uh, Mooney, what we were talking about earlier, they're going to have some uh, great chances to learn the ropes uh, as the season progresses. So, Jalen, I want to ask you, do you think – that the other Jalen on the Bears, Jalen Johnson uh, and Cole Komet, have a, have a pretty big impact here in week one? So first with Jalen Johnson, um, we kind of like discussed this all throughout the all season. I didn't think he was going to get the start right away. Um, I thought we were going to give the, the quarterback two positions to Kevin Tolliver. Obviously, he got released on cut down day. So basically, Jalen Johnson is the only real quarterback to who the, you know, the coaches are confident in. Um, the other two are, are rookies in Kendall Vildor and then Duke Shelley, who mainly plays the side. So he's really the only person who, is, who could take that CB2 position. And um, his first game, uh, Mike Parf said he's going up against two talented wide receivers and Marvin Jones Jr. and uh, Kenny Galladay, who are probably going to, you know, it, I'm, I don't know who he's going to face up against. It might be Kevin Galladay. I mean, not Kevin Galladay. It might be Galladay or it might be Jones, and um, they're going to give him – um, a long game. They, they, they both are great wide receivers, and then Matthew Stafford might target him just because this is his first game as a in, as a rookie in the NFL. And then with Cole Komet, um, I kind of see he, he was going to probably be the you know the the number two tight end behind Jimmy Graham. Um, Jimmy Graham is a great tight end. He's you know produced a lot in this league, and Cole Komet running behind him it, is going to be great for him and great for the Bears as a whole. So definitely see that. I definitely can. See Cole Komet producing in this in this offense. Um, Nagy uses the offense a lot in his in his system, and now that Mitchell Trubisky has two tall tight ends to him, for, for him to throw to in the red zone and down the seam, I, I think that's going to benefit Mitchell. Yeah, uh, I definitely think Komet is someone who could definitely get a lot of targets, especially down in the red zone. You know, he got the name RoboCop uh, when he was in camp. Uh, you know, he's six six, two hundred sixty two pounds. 
And at Notre Dame, his first two years, he was focusing on baseball. He's still incredibly raw, and he caught six touchdowns last year, 515 receiving yards for the Fighting Irish. I think he's definitely someone who uh, should be able to step up and have a good game uh, and be, you know, the target we all expect him to be as a second-round pick. And then in regards to Jalen Johnson, yeah, it's definitely going to be a long game for him. Uh, it should be lined up across from Marvin Jones and also get a decent bit of Kenny Galladay. And we haven't even mentioned Danny, Danny Amendola yet, who uh, also can slide outside. So should be a tough game for Johnson. I assume he'll definitely get targeted a decent bit, and we'll see if he's up to the task. Thank you guys so much for listening in to episode number 79 of Uncut. While we are recording so many podcasts, uh, Uncut was a very successful uh a very successful series on our channel during the off season, so it's something we want to keep around. If you want more content from us, do us a favor, head over to our website, beardown.com. We're posting articles basically every day there now, uh, giving you guys as much coverage as we can for all these games, so go be sure to check that out. There's a ton of extra content on there. If you want to find sneak peeks of podcasts or give us suggestions about what to record about, you can find us on social media, uh, both on Instagram and Twitter, at Down. And finally, you can find the links to all of our Bears fan pages on Instagram down in the description. Par Shaw, Jalen McClinton, this is only the first time we're recording today, but we've got to record a uh, three key matchups video later tonight. So how does it feel to be back on the grind? And uh, any last words? Yeah, I mean, the season is almost here. It's Tuesday morning right now, or Tuesday afternoon, you could say. So we got, I'd say Thursday, Friday, it's like four five, or five days yeah. left to the season. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's like right here. Um, Quick mask. Yeah. I'm yeah. Oh my God, Marcus, you really just counted that. But um, yeah, I'm, I, uh, <laughs> I just, I'm just happy this season is here. Um, I couldn't be more excited. Um, hopefully we have a great NFL season. Um, and that's about it. Beer down. Yeah, uh, we're all looking forward to it. Uh, just so Parth knows, there is five days until the season kicks off. So, five um, days, all right. Let me, yeah. let me put it on my whiteboard right now so I don't forget. Five days until the season starts. Uh, we're super excited, and we hope you guys are as well. So be sure to like this video if you made it this far, and keep up, uh, keep up to date on our content because we're putting stuff out basically every day. It's been a pleasure to be your host. Once again, my name is Chris Malpe. Bears fans, do us a favor, as always, stay safe and bear down. We'll see you in the next one tomorrow night, three key factors slash matchups. And, uh, yeah, we're excited to record it and get it out tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Uh-huh.